Wallace and Gromit is the charming tale of an idly rich British man, living in the upstairs part of his country estate, while the underclass downstairs does all the work for him, freeing that man to spend money on nonsense and obsess over his next meal. What's wrong with Wensleydale? I know, I know, describing Wallace and Gromit as if it's Downton Abbey or whatever is inaccurate. In two tiny ways. Wallace and Gromit don't live in a country estate. They live in a house. A nice one, in a nice neighborhood, in the 10th most expensive nation to live in on Earth. Also, it's unfair to say Wallace lives upstairs. He comes downstairs plenty of times, just like Lord Grantham does in Downton Abbey. You see, even though Wallace and Gromit is a clay cartoon about a cheese addict, it secretly modernizes a storytelling genre the British might call an upstairs-downstairs drama, and I will call a class struggle house party. Downton Abbey and its predecessors depict Britain's rich and poor coexisting in a mansion. Wallace and Gromit does that too, and its lower class is represented by Gromit, who is a beagle, the official dog breed of pointless British subservience. Beagles have existed for millennia, but the modern breed was developed by 19th century British aristocracy as a scent hound for beagling, a sport where beagles hunt and kill rabbits while an overdressed white guy watches. We miss that symbolism here in America because our cartoon beagles can rise above their station. Snoopy gets a college education, plays baseball, and even joins the Air Force because he has talent, drive, and the blessings of American meritocracy. Gromit is just as brilliant as Snoopy. We see him read everything from the newspaper to electronics textbooks to Dostoevsky. But just like how Britain's rich rigid class system forced the Downton era's potential geniuses to scrub floors and groom horses, ongoing modern classism forces a dog capable of co-constructing spaceships to spend his time fetching slippers. Thank you, old friend. And in the real world, the lower class struggles to speak up for itself in ways that could affect real change. The show captures that by making Gromit literally voiceless. Sure, most dogs don't talk, but he can't even bark. And since Wallace and Gromit is a British class struggle house party, our working class hero stays that way. Shows like Downton Abbey aren't about people changing their station. They are metaphors for Britain's unequal classes working together to save the nation. We love both classes of Downton's heroes because they want their estate, and by extension England, to survive. And they're up against disastrous threats, from the Titanic sinking, to World War I, to women's rights, to Irish people breeding. Wallace and Gromit's characters band together too, pursuing that same goal of saving Britain. They're just saving post-imperial Britain. Instead of a white British man like Wallace getting to own 25% of the world and an estate full of servants, Wallace owns British citizenship and a house full of his dog. Wallace's forerunners got to conquer a bunch of Africa so hard, they named 150,000 square miles of it Rhodesia after one British guy. By Wallace's time, the remaining frontier is space, and all he can do with it is picnic. Because Wallace has to leave the moon. He's needed on the home front. His house, and by extension his England, has a collapsing financial foundation. We shall have to economize, Gromit. This forces Wallace to work menial jobs, breaking his back as a window washer, risking his life as a bread baker, and slaving away in the agricultural sector in our terrifying era of GMOs. And Wallace and Gromit is as wonderful as Downton Abbey because it celebrates people respecting each other as the glue that holds the world together. Every episode is a social parable where the upper class are so useless they can't even put on the right trousers, the lower class can't fix everything on their own, the upper and lower classes drift apart due to misunderstandings and deep-seated feelings of injustice, but then, they recognize each other's value, team up, and save the day. Despite living in a world that's so topsy-turvy, penguins are renting property and stealing diamonds. So chip chip cheerio, Britain. You no longer own India, Iraq, or Boston. But you continue to own storytelling that recognizes the value of every human life, even if that life is canine and claymated. And Wallace and Gromit is so good, it's inspired me to, to make a little claymated show of my own. Uh, I've got all the gear over there, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set up the first scene, like it's gonna be Hey, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please do all the YouTube things and let us know in the comments what you think of Wallace and Gromit and the world of Britain. We're gonna pick one lucky commenter who is gonna get flown to Britain probably at some point in, in the near future. I mean, one of you probably has those plans.